Welcome to the Worship of God at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Claremont, North Carolina. We are so pleased to have you with us today. Happy New Year to you. Now, surely you must think I've lost my mind, but however, we begin a new church year today. We've made the transition from Christ the King, and now we're at the first Sunday in Advent. Stir up your power and come. The psalmist's plea in Psalm 80, verse 2, has become familiar to us in the Advent prayers. Isaiah wants God to rip the heavens open. Both cry out for an apparently distant, angry God to show up, to save, to restore. When we hear Jesus describing the coming of the Son of Man with stars falling from heaven, it can sound dire and horrible, not like anything we would ever hope for. But when we really look at the suffering of people that God loves, we can share the hope that God could tear and would tear open the heavens and come. Not with despair, again, with hope. We begin our worship now with a brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together. Let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God. We confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened and To the cross I look and to the cross I cling, of its suffering I do dream, of its work I do sing, cause on it my Savior, both bruised and crushed, showed that God is love, and God is just. the cross you beckon me draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I sweetly broken holy surrender Priceless gift, undeserved life, have I been given through Christ crucified. You called me out of death, you called me into life, as under your wrath. Now through the cross I'm reconciled. At the cross you beckon me, draw me gently 
to my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I'm sweetly broken wholly surrendered at the cross you beckon me draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I'm sweetly broken wholly surrendered in all of the cross I must confess how wondrous your redeeming love and how great is your faithfulness at the cross you beckon me draw me gently to my knees and I am lost for words so lost in love I am sweetly broken holy surrendered at the cross you beckon me draw me gently to my knees and i am lost for words so lost in love i'm sweetly broken holy surrendered God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your no name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence." From ages past, no one has heard, nor ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because, we, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes to us from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, 
just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said, in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and bring forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In light of the numerous COVID-19 related illnesses and deaths, I'd like to begin today by telling you a story. A long time ago, there was a little boy whose parents had both died. He was taken in by an aunt who raised him as her own child. Many years later, after the boy had grown and became successful in business, he received a letter from his aunt. She was terminally ill, and from the tone of her letter, quite afraid of death. Thus, the man, who had been raised and strongly influenced by this woman, decided to write her a letter in response. He began, It is now 35 years since I, a little boy of six, was left quite alone in the world. You sent me word that you would give me a home and be a mother to me. I've never forgotten that day when I made the long journey of ten miles to your house. I remember being disappointed that instead of you coming yourself, you sent your servant Caesar to fetch me. I well remember my tears and anxiety as perched atop a horse and clinging to Caesar, we rode to your house. Night fell before we reached the destination, and it grew dark, and I became more afraid. Do you think she will go to bed before we get there? I asked Caesar nervously. Oh no, Caesar replied, she will certainly be up waiting for you. When we get there through these woods, you will see the light shining in the window. We made it to the clearing, and there was the light as he had promised. I remember that you were waiting in the doorway. You put your arms around me and lifted me from this horse, a tired and frightened little boy, and placed me safely on the ground. You had a fire burning, and a hot supper was waiting for me on the stove. After supper, you took me to my new room. You listened to my prayers, and then you waited until I fell asleep. You probably know why I'm retelling these events to you now. Very soon, God is going to send for you and take you to a new home. I am trying to tell you that you do not need to worry or be afraid of the summons or of the strange journey or even the dark messenger of death. God can be trusted to do as much for you as you did for me so many years ago. You can wait and not fear, 
For at the end of the road, you will find love and welcome awaiting you, and you will be safe in God's care. I will watch and pray for you until you are out of my sight. I shall also wait for the day when I will make the same journey and find you waiting for me to greet me at the end of the road. This powerful story illustrates Advent, the season we are entering into today, and its important theme of waiting. During this season, the first of the church year, we wait for the coming of the Lord in two ways. His second coming, when the world will be claimed by Christ, and his coming in history at Christmas. Our scripture text for today told us that we must be ready and that there's nothing to fear as we wait God's arrival at the end of time. Yet the Isaiah passage spoke of the heavens opening and coming down, mountains quaking and fires burning. This does not sound comforting. Instead, it sounds like something we might or will fear. And then in our gospel, we heard Jesus speaking of the need to be watchful and awake for the return of the Master, who neither the angels in heaven nor the Son of Man knows the time of his return. Beware, keep alert, keep awake. In these texts, these warnings are stated by Jesus. These phrases do not sound like the anticipation of the birth of a baby. They do not sound like the advent that I would like to focus on during this time of year. Where are the decorations? Where are the preparations for the wrapped gifts? Where's the holly jolly? Where are the greeting cards and well wishes from friends and family? I don't think I have ever received a card at this time of year that said, beware, or keep alert, or keep awake. These warnings create anxiety and fear in me rather than joy and gladness. Yes, Advent is the time when we prepare for the birth of Christ and our remembrance of this special time in history. Advent is also a time to prepare for the time that is to come. The second coming of Christ. When the heavens and earth will be joined as one and God will reign forever and ever. When we will have our eternal life with God. Our journey may or may not happen. This journey may or may not happen in our lifetime. But Jesus is coming again. And scripture tells us that we must get ready. This gospel lesson for today is part of what is called Jesus' little apocalypse, during which he tells his disciples to anticipate the end of the world and the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. During this time in history, the temple was the focal point for the Jews as the place of God. And upon seeing the temple at the beginning of chapter 13 in Mark, the disciples were awed and enamored by the scale and the beauty of the temple. In fact, they had what we might call a little red riding hood moment. Oh, what big stones it has. Oh, how tall it is. Oh, what beauty it beholds. But instead of agreeing with them, Jesus responds to the disciples' words by telling them that one day the temple will fall. One day there will not be a temple. No longer will the temple in Jerusalem be the location of God, and no longer will they be able to look only there for God. As we hear this story, and it relates to us, where do you and I look for God throughout this Advent season. And when looking for God, what do we hope to find? Jesus tells the disciples that there will be many false prophets and messiahs that will try to lead them astray. There will be others who will tell them that God has abandoned them or does not hear their prayers and that God is too busy to be concerned about our human problems. 
But as we take another look at today's text, Jesus tells us that that is not true because God loves us and God's words have not and will not pass away. Jesus will return and God's reign will continue forever and ever. And through this earthly journey, we are called to keep alert and awake. To look for God in the unexpected places, not just in the walls of our church sanctuary or in temples. We are to remain vigilant in our faith and our work. And we have a responsibility to not only prepare ourselves daily, but as disciples of Christ, we're called to help prepare others for the second coming of Jesus. Even though we do not know when Christ will come, we are called to share Christ's message with other people. We are called to feed those in our midst who are hungry. We are called to visit the sick and the homebound. And we can be the little Christ today in our community, striving for peace and justice all around us. We can help prepare the way of Christ's return. And during this Advent season, it might mean we need to continue to do things differently than we have in years past. In our fatigue from COVID-19 and in our longing for the way things used to be, we are to remain patient, alert, and vigilant. It's easy to lose our enthusiasm when one is confined to the same small spaces and being with the same people or even by oneself day after day. It's difficult when we are encouraged to not gather with our extended family and friends in order to remain safe and well. And this waning enthusiasm is evident when we cannot worship in our sanctuary because of the need for social distancing. And for many, this past Friday, this Black Friday shopping with family was discouraged also and may have been replaced by online shopping in our own living rooms by ourselves in isolation. There are so many changes and losses this year and so many disruptions to our traditions and our holiday festivities. But it is within these disruptions and breaks in tradition that we may be able to see God in new ways. It may be that our understanding of Advent, the coming of Christ, is broadened and enriched because of our new perspective of God's revelations coming in unexpected ways. God seen and revealed as God has not been seen or revealed before. So may we give thanks that God Emmanuel is with us in our Advent sorrow and our Advent preparations. God is waiting for us and watching us with open arms welcoming you and me into new relationship, one that is safe in God's care. It is the time of Advent, the coming of Christ, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. May each of us remain alert. May all of us be aware and remain vigilant in our preparations for the coming of our Savior preparing for the new dawning of the kingdom of God in the midst of our lives today and forever. See, Christ is coming, so let us rejoice. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, believe. And let your light appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray, and watch, and wrestle. At midnight comes the cry. The watchers on the mountain.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and of our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Particularly, we pray for those on the front line in this COVID-19 time. Be with them, fill them with compassion and the power to respond in their care. We also pray for those who are dealing with issues of justice as they address those who are suffering, who are oppressed, and those who work to welcome those who are included. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe winter, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. And we, as the body of Christ, and strengthen us to be your hands in doing your work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, other invisible illnesses. We also pray for those in our families and congregations who suffer with challenges to their physical health. Ease their suffering and support them in their struggle. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, and healing. Those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.